All right, guys, today we have the blade everyone has been asking about for the longest time. One of the most popular blades in the game, and easily one of the best. That's right, I'm talking about Aegean, the number one ranked blade in the game by far, and I can't wait to talk about him. Okay, none of that might be true, and in truth, Aegean is probably one of the most bland blades in the game from both a design and playstyle standpoint, but in this series, we aim for completion in our analysis, so even Aegean will get his time in the spotlight. As such, in this video we are going to discuss Aegean, his strengths and weaknesses as a blade, and how to set him up and use him if you really want to use him that badly. If you enjoy my content and all of these guides, be sure to subscribe to the channel because it really does help out so much. Let's get into it. So Aegean is the second katana we are covering in a row, but unlike the previous katana, Aegean is restricted to only Morag and Rex. This is fine, however, since those are probably the two best users of Katana-class weapons anyway, and being of some story importance to Morag, we'll be using him on her. Being a Katana-class weapon, he is naturally focused on defense and evasion. In fact, he has the heaviest focus on evasion of all Katana blades, thanks to his skill tree we'll look at later. As far as his general stats, being a Katana weapon, he gets a great critical hit tier, being able to reach up to 50% with Moon Matter, and has a decent auto attack stat of 1340 for a tank class weapon. Block Rate is in the second highest tier as well, but once again that cannot be shown very well when he has Moon Matter equipped since that's like the lowest block rate weapon in the game, or Core Chip at least. His defenses don't really matter much, but he does have 25 in both stats, which is decent enough for a tank blade. He comes with a 15% agility stat mod, as you might expect, and has a cooldown of 4 when maxed out, giving him some okay availability. What does a Geon have to separate himself as a blade, though? Let's look at his skill tree. A Geon's first skill is Enlightenment. This will improve his evasion by 20% when under 30% health at level 1, rising up to 60% evasion at level 5. Basically, if a Geon gets low on health, he'll have better odds to evade attacks, and as such, not die when he is low on health. This is a decent ability for a tank to have in a vacuum because it gives him more survivability and evasion stacks pretty nicely with the high agility of Morag and the stat mod of Geon has. Not getting hit and staying alive is always valuable, and 60% is a pretty nice buff to that. His second skill is pretty similar. It's called Like Water. This will improve his evasion while moving around in combat by 20% on level 1, again rising to 60% at level 5. This skill isn't that bad since there's many times you'll know when an enemy is about to attack, so if you want to quickly move around to increase your evasion, that can actually be pretty helpful. Once again, it works very well the more agility you have also to make Aegean nearly unhittable ever. It may not be a stretch to say Aegean has the best evasive capabilities in the game. He will probably never get hit with the right setup outside of the minimum 3% hit chance no matter what, but besides that, he can virtually have the 97% chance to evade at all times. His last skill even goes a step further. It's called Serene Heart. After getting to max affinity in combat, he will perfectly evade all attacks for 10 seconds at level 1 and 18 seconds at level 5. This means every attack will guarantee miss for 18 seconds instantly after getting max affinity. You can even cheese harder by running out of range of, of a Geon to lose max affinity and then gain max affinity back to regain the effect. Of course, that's probably just a big waste of time, so I wouldn't worry about doing that. All of Aegean's skills are all about evasion, and truth be told, with these skills he will be nearly impossible to kill. He is THE evasion tank in the truest sense of the word. There's just one tiny little problem here. Aegean has absolutely no damage at all. What good is all of this evasion if he's just going to struggle heavily to get aggro in fights? The lack of damage makes it difficult to keep aggro on him unless you load up on damage as much as possible, and that's pretty much essential to making him useful. And even then, he'll probably still struggle keeping aggro. All of these evasion-based skills are decent enough in a vacuum, but the lack of a good skill to keep aggro really hurts a Geon's viability. He has the lowest damage output of all Katana Blades, and many fights when controlling him will likely drag out quite a bit. All in all, he really needs some changes in his skills because he is utterly outclassed by other evasive blades like Corvin, who can still evade almost as well, but does everything else far better. But, maybe you just like a Geon and think his King of Common Blades design is cool, so we will continue. Let's take a look at something actually decent about a Geon, his specials. A Geon's level 1 special is Water Moon. It is a single hit and decently fast ether based special. There is virtually nothing spectacular about it. The damage ratio is pretty much the exact average and most common ratio for level 1 specials, 300 at level 1, 460 at level 5, 
and 480 at max affinity. It has no modifiers, no area of effect, and the bonus effect is pretty boring and unspectacular of just a nulling enemy guard rate. It has nothing really going for it outside of speed, so I'd say this is likely his most unimpressive and worst special, and not really worth using unless you really just need a quick water special. A Geon's level 2 special is Breaking Wave. This is a 3 hit physical special of slightly below average speed. Fortunately, everything else about this special is pretty good. It has a decent damage ratio of 400 at level 1, 560 at level 5, and 609 at max affinity. And it comes with a critical hit modifier of 25%, which is actually pretty nice because the bonus effect is increasing critical damage 85%. A Geon really needed this because the damage boost along with the high critical hit rate can actually make this special hurt quite a bit. This is a nice special to use for damage and to try to get aggro on a Geon, so I definitely recommend using this one when you can. A Geon's level 3 special is Midnight Mist. This is another great special. It is a physical based special that is 13 hits and a great special for building party meter thanks to a Geon's high critical hit rate and the bonus effect giving more party meter when you meet the criteria and hit enemies targeting you. The special really needs enemies to be targeting you to get a lot of damage though because the bonus effect is very much tied to that so a Geon's aggro problem can still make this special unreliable. It has a nice damage ratio of 500 at level 1, 700 at level 5, and 748 at max affinity, and it's a decently fast special for having so many hits. All in all, it can be a great special to use in many situations, and is especially helpful if you're being targeted. This is definitely a good special overall. A Geon's level 4 special is very similar to his level 3. It's called Sea God's Tidal Wave, and it has the exact same effect as his level 3, which is dealing more damage to enemies targeting him. The damage ratio as a whole is 1000, so it's a bit stronger than his level 3 if you can charge it up, and it has a 40% critical hit mod, which is nice for nearly guaranteed critical hits, but not as many hits as his level 3, so I guess that's the trade-off. As a level 4, it of course has the b nice benefits of immunity to everything, and driver combo freezing, and all in all, it is a pretty decent level 4. Still, the problem is none of these specials can really cover for his lack of damage everywhere else, and if a Geon doesn't have aggro, his level 3 and 4 get nerfed damage-wise, which is not good for getting aggro either. He really needs some more damage on his kit, and I'd say the lack of it is by far his biggest weakness. Regardless though, setup for him is going to be trying to fix this issue as much as possible. So core chip should be moon matter for that high critical hit rate and auto attack stat. For aux cores, absolutely go all in on damage because he desperately needs it. Affinity max attack and outdoor indoor attack are great options. Don't even bother with evasion aux cores. He has plenty already and needs as much damage as possible. As such, I don't really think any other aux cores are that good or effective on him. He really just needs the damage to be an effective tank. For accessories, Crimson Headband is a must because of his high critical hit rate, so boosting that is very useful for him. And in the last slot, Abyss Mask is fantastic because his evasion is so high, he'll never get hit much so he can get a nice damage benefit from this item. You're always welcome to use a Glamorous Swimsuit or something though to get an 85% damage boost without the drawback. And in the final slot, which is actually the first slot, not the last slot, I am running Burst Symbol to help with chain attacking strength because a Geon is probably not going to be carrying damage in most setups, so helping out your allies with this is pretty nice. Feel free to run another damage booster or something here because it would certainly still help him. If there is one thing a Geon has going for him, it's that he likes desserts, so Art Recharge is very helpful for increasing his damage as much as possible when it comes to pouch setup. Not much else to say, so let's take a look at how to use a Geon practically. So, the first thing of note is that I am again running the Agility Mod Common Blades with Pentagon Chips, so I can have as much agility as possible on a Geon, and I have Mithra as support to give that Foresight extra 50% evasion bonus to make sure we're just never going to be getting hit at all. I am also running Fiora and Nia for the first time ever, because I felt like I was using Tora way too much. Fiora is going to give us additional critical hit rate, and she's also going to be able to break with Nia if we have Master Scope on her, so we'll still have a way to do the driver combo. I also have Adenine on Nia so she can launch as well. So we basically still have access to the driver combo here, so that's that's um something we can do. And we've got the extra critical hit rate, which um, is going to benefit a, benefit a Geon's um, already high critical hit rate and the critical damage bonus we've got on him. So that is one of the reasons we have that. This also allows us to smash with a Geon because he is a Katana Blade on Morag, so he has that ability to smash, which can always be very helpful in certain fights. 
And one other thing I'm doing, as I already stated, is I'm going to be chain attacking as a lot of my damage in many fights, because there are a lot of situations where you're just not going to get a ton of damage out of, um... Aegean himself, so you're gonna need to rely on some extra damage from your allies as well. I use, um, my level 4 there to block Ultra Annihilation Phone, not because I was worried about it hitting me, I'm nearly certain I would've been able to dodge it, but I didn't want it killing my allies there that might not have as much amazing evasive capabilities as the legendary Aegean here. So, we just did that to be safe there. And, honestly, you can kind of see, we can run with, like, just a simple driver combo setup and have the extra evasion when it does not work out, and that helps out quite a bit. All in all, some kind of support for a Geon is still very much appreciated. Whether you use Dagas to boost his damage further, Fiora to boost the critical hit rate, Mithra to boost evasion further, a Geon would benefit a lot from pretty much any type of support, which of course is going to be very helpful. And this chain attack is probably going to finish off the Tyranotype Turtle here, so we're going to use a bit of a stronger enemy here. That has a little bit more break resist, so we can rely on a Geon's agility a bit more, and we'll be able to see what his true capabilities are. So... I think the best way to showcase this is going to be Cloud Sea King Ken on Bring Your... not Bring Your Chaos. On Normal Mode, but the actual Challenge Mode enemy. So this fight's kind of going to showcase how Geon's damage isn't really that impressive against a lot of practical, like, strong enemies. So, we're going to have to rely on our allies here. I have added Elma to um, Nia. We're not going to be using Overdrive. But I have added Elma to Nia to give us a nice dark combination so we can set up the two orb chain attack. And just because having the extra break arc can also be additionally helpful to try to get as many break chances as possible. I believe Nia has about a 50% chance to break Ken with every time she uses her break art. I do have auto balancer on her, so block rate is not an issue here. And of course, Rex can topple with Mithra, so that's very another benefit to having Mithra here in this party, in addition to increasing our evasion even further. We also get that amazing topple art. Tora would probably be better than using Nia, but you know, I felt like I was using Tora a little bit too much in these guides. We already know how good Tora is, so you know what? We're gonna show off Nia, because we don't get to use Nia in many videos. I feel I feel like a lot of people want me to use Nia more, so we're using Nia in this video. So one thing you're probably noticing is that a Geon's level 2 is kind of his highest damage special, because the crit damage is very valuable, especially when we can actually get the critical hits. And that's going to hold true even during, like, chain attacks and such. You'll get, like, near damage cap hits with his level 2, and his level 3 is just not going to be able to hold up as well. Ideally, we're going to be able to set up a nice fusion combo chain attack here and get quite a bit of damage off of it. Um, since it's going to be a 3-round chain attack total, it's going to be best to get a fusion combo off on a break since it'll last long enough for us to get all of our specials off. And truth be told, I probably could have ended the fight with just one of these if I would have, um actually looked at my damage setups on the other party members, so I don't think they're as optimal as they could have been, because some of these specials were not doing as much damage as they should have. But overall here, Geon has a nice amount of um, evasion to block a lot of dangerous attacks if they ever go through our um, driver combo locking here. Which I also think I've showed off quite a bit, so... You can see that Lethal Harpoon. That actually just got blocked by the damage um, barrier I had, but in most situations, you'll be able to block these attacks. So that was the break I was waiting for. Now we can freeze the driver combo with our level 4, get that fusion combo up, and then chain attack. So we've got the 50% extra damage in this chain attack off of all of our specials. And all we need is to make sure at least one of our specials besides Mithra hits the Dark Orb, and then we're guaranteed to get the 3-round chain attack. And we get that out of the way pretty early on there. So now I'm going to be using Elma. Elma has a lot of damage here, and um, she's probably our best bet for getting higher damage specials here. I probably should have used her for the round 3 instead of only using her for round 1 and 2, but that's not a big deal either. A Geon's level 2 there with the crit damage can actually hit nearly cap damage, even with um, only 1,000 extra damage ratio and a kind of weak fusion combo, so that's actually pretty nice. So Elma, like I said, I probably should have saved her for the level 3. That would have done a lot more damage, but we still get a decent chunk of damage there on Ken with her level 2, so that's nice. And a Geon's level 3, I honestly expected this to do way more than it did, but a Geon's damage isn't that impressive, so that's, that's unfortunate, I guess. 
That is why we need strong allies, of course. Mithras level 3 is doing a lot of damage because, of course, that pierces and it's just really strong in general. And we use Fiora to finish it off. So Ken still has a little bit of health left and we don't have any party meter, but luckily a Jiyun can get party meter really fast thanks to the high critical hit rate and everything like that. And you can see a Jiyun does not have aggro anymore after that chain attack, so we're going to try to get it back as soon as we can here. Now this attack is a lot of hits, so even though we have good evasion, it's still going to go through it, which is unfortunate. I think Ken actually has like the highest dexterity in the game, so that's probably another thing. <laughs> But it, once we get, if we were to get low on health, he wouldn't be able to hit us like like at all because then we get the 60% um, evasion buff. So now we're going to finish off this fight. We're going to use the Dark Tide. We're going to get that um, one single orb for all, we, all we're going to need to finish off this fight. Then we can chain attack on top of this. And that's going to be the end of Cloud Sea King Ken here. So all in all, with the right setup, you can even use a Geon to um, take out high health enemies if you really want to. It would still be more efficient to probably use other options, but if you're looking for just, like, pure evasion and trying to stay alive, like, to the best of your ability, a Geon has a lot of good ability to do that. So once again here, a Geon's level 2 is probably his best special in Chain Attacks. Might only be 3 hits, but, you know, he can at least, like, almost damage cap it if it actually doesn't get blocked. So, good for him. All in all, Gion is really not that spectacular, but he's serviceable if you really just want to use him. And he does have some really good evasion, so if you're trying to just not get hit and try to win that way, then a Gion at least has that going for him to a decent effect. He's definitely not a world ender, and he's probably the weakest katana blade overall. But if you like a Gion, you can use him and have plenty of success because the game gives you so many tools to be successful with whatever you want to run, and that is one of the things I really love about Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Well, with all that being done, I hope you all learned something from watching this guide, and if you really enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and comment, and do whatever else you want to do to support me. Thank you all so much for watching, look forward to all of my future guides, and have a wonderful day.